Hello everyone, welcome back to this course on Fundamentals of Data Science and today we are going to look into more information about the Markov chain process. So here is the content, we are going to deal with Markov chain, transition matrix and we are going to see how this Markov process uh, can be used in predictions as well. So that is going to be your main objective for today's process. We are going to see what is the Markov chain process and we are going to look at some of the characteristics of Markov chain and finally we are going to see how we can do certain data analysis using Markov chain process. Eventually you will find as some means of predictions can be achieved using this whole process. We will directly go on to this Markov chain process. Here it is, the Markov. Well, this whole stochastic model was initiated by the Russian mathematician Andrei Markov. Yes, this Markov chain is a stochastic model describing a sequence of possible events in which probability of each event depends only on the state attained in previous events. In other words, as you can see here, a sample model is given here. There are two states, E and A for example. So, 30 percentage retained in E, you can consider it is like uh, England and America for example. So, people in England stay in England 30 percent and 70 percent move to America, whereas in America 40 percent move to England and 60 percent stay in America. So, that is a simple uh, state uh, transition is happening here. So, this Markov process is based on general principle of stochastic simulation methods. So, basically we also have something called Markov chain Monte Carlo methods. So, which are used for stimulating or simulating sampling for complex probability distributions. They have found applications in Bayesian statistics and artificial intelligence. So, you can see uh, what is this Bayesian statistics which you might have already familiar with this term Bayesian statistics and which had a basis for the statistics based on the conditional probability and eventually when you are relating these two together, eventually they are going to be helpful in various artificial intelligent applications. Let us uh, look at some of the properties and characteristics of this Markov process. As mentioned earlier, the Markov process is a stochastic process that satisfies certain Markov properties. So, we consider this Markov property, one of the main Markov property is that it is of memory less. In other words, it is a process for which predictions can be made regarding future outcome based solely on its present state. And most importantly, such predictions are just as good as the could be made knowing the process of full history. Are you doubtful about this? We are going to see some examples on it, but of course, as a whole when you look at this process, you might find there are some shortcomings and later on how uh, the whole process of this Markov chain can be used in reinforcement learning of artificial intelligence. You will be seeing that Markov process have larger applications in various domains because of this property and moreover people also try to modify this Markov chain in various applications so that some of the limitations of this memoryless process can be avoided. Generally speaking, what happens is that uh, whenever you have the present state in a system, 
you also talk about future state and there are past state as well. So, future state and the past states are independent. A stochastic process, we saw that Markov process is a stochastic process. So, a stochastic process has the Markov property. If the conditional probability distributions for future states of the process, that is conditions on both past and present values depends only upon the present state because we are not having any memory. So, everything depends up only upon the present state that is the given present state and the future does not depends on the past state. Yes, we do not have any memory. So, the future even does not depends upon the past state. A process with this property is said to be Markovian or Markov process. So, that is what we are looking at. It is a stochastic process, it is a memoryless process. Well, this Markov process is the basis for Markov chain as well as the Brownian motions. It is another topic Brownian motions, we are not going to consider it, but it is another process uh, people still use it for other applications. Let us move on, let us see this simple example. Assume that an herb contains two red balls and one green ball and one ball was drawn yesterday, one ball was drawn today and the final ball will be drawn tomorrow. So, can you see that there is one past state one present state and one future state. All of the draws are without replacement. You just take out from the R, you are not going to replace it. So, without replacement. Suppose you know that today's ball is red, but you have no information about yesterday's ball. The chance that tomorrow's ball will be red is 1 by 2. That is because the only two remaining outcomes of this random experience are going to be red and green. Because today you have already taken red outside, the remaining there are only two balls remaining, remaining balls are red and green. So, chances that tomorrow's ball will be red would be 1 by 2. So, here is a simple table, yesterday's outcome, today's outcome and tomorrow's. If suppose yesterday you already picked up red and today you have already picked up red, then tomorrow we know that it is going to be red for sure. But since we are talking about memoryless, we do not have information about the red that has been picked yesterday. So, which means that there is a chance for still getting red, but the chance are of 1 by 2. So, in other words, if you know that both today and yesterday's ball were red, then you guarantee to get a green ball tomorrow. Well, that is one thing. So, there is this uh, discrepancy shows that the probability distribution for tomorrow's color depends not only at present value, but also affected by the information about the past. So, this stochastic process of observed colors does not have Markov property. Could you notice this? If suppose uh, in this process, because the distributions for tomorrow's color depends on present, but we also notice that it is also affected by the information about the past. If that is the case, then we do not call that as a Markov or it is not having a Markovian property. So, if you are using the similar, similar experiment, if the sampling without replacement is changed with replacement, the process can be observed 
has a Markov property. So, if suppose yesterday you took the red ball outside and again today you are going to replace it and then if you are doing the experiments then the whole process change. Okay, here is a simple example of Markov process again. A particular utility stock is very stable and in the short run the probability that it increase or decrease in price depends only on the results of preceding days trading. The price of stock is observed at 4 pm each day and is recorded as increase, decrease or unchanged. The sequence of observation forms this Markov process. So, let us uh, see what are the states. So, in this process uh, we are going to have different states based on the outcome. So, these outcomes we call states and outcome of the experiments we are referring as current state. Let us see how we can uh, define it here. Next state and current state you can see. So, here is the transition matrix record all tab all datas about the transition from one state to another state. So, from current state to next state. There it is, we have this probability transition matrix. So, with this stochastic process all entries are greater than or equal to 0 and the sum of the entries in each column should be 1. Right. So, with this uh, thought in mind, uh, we are going to continue discussing this example of the stocks. Again, for the utility stocks, the example that we are seeing now, if stock increase one day, the probability that on next day it increases 0.3, remain unchanged is 0 0.2 and decrease is 0.5 got it. So, if the stock increase then the next day it might increase at 0.3 probability unchanged at 0.2 and decrease at 0.5. If the stock is unchanged, if it is unchanged then the next day it might increase at 0.6 it remain unchanged at 0.1 and it decreases at 0.3. If the stock decreases, then the next day it might increase at the probability of 0.3, it might remain, it remains unchanged at the point probability of 0.4 and it decrease at the 0.3 probability. So, based on this you can have a transition matrix based on increase, unchange and decrease. These are the three states we have. Here it is. If suppose today, if the stock increase, then tomorrow there is a chance of increases 0.3 probability chance of unchange is 0.2 and chances that it would decrease is 0.5. Likewise, there are two more state. If today is unchanged, the tomorrow the probability that it would increase is 0.6 and tomorrow the probability that it would unchange is 0.1 and tomorrow the probability that it would decrease is 0.3. Likewise, if today the stock decreases, then tomorrow the stock will increase at the probability of 0.3, will remain unchanged at the probability of 0.4 and uh, will decrease at the probability of 0.3. Here it is the current state and the next state based on this three process, increase, unchange and decrease. So, you can relate what is happening. If suppose current 
status increase. So, what is the probability that it remains increase? So, you can think about uh, this process. If you look at our discussion here, if the current state is increase, the next state will be increased at the probability of 0.3, right. The next state it remains unchanged at the probability of 0.2, the next state it would decrease the probability of 0.5. The next state here refers to the next day's trading. Likewise, we are filling out this whole transition matrix. So, once you are done with this, you can go and have this distribution of the matrix. Here, whenever a Morgov process applies a group with number with all possible states, different states in a distribution matrix for n in the column matrix. Here, these entries gives the percentage of members in each of the states for n period of time. So, that is a simple process that has been shown here and we are going to look at another example, a concrete example. In this example, we just come to know how we can have the transition matrix and how it can be evenly distributed in this matrix, distribution matrix. Let us look at another example of this distribution matrix for n. Okay, here, uh, according to a census studies from 1960s, it reveals that in US, 80 percentage of daughters of working women also work and that 30 percentage of daughters of non-working women work. Assume that this trend remains unchanged from one generation to next generation. If 40 percentage of women worked in 1960, determine the percentage of working women in each of next two generations. In other words, it is kind of prediction. We are trying to see what happens for the next two generations of the women in US. Let us look at this problem here. So, here there are two states work and do not work. So, let us have this column of the transition matrix corresponding to work and the probability that a daughter from this state that is work is 0 0.8 and do not work is 0 0.2 that is 1 minus 0 0.8 that is 0 0.2 and similarly daughters from do not work state works with the probability of 0 0.3 and does not work with the probability of 0 0.7. So, these data are taken from the given information. Likewise, you can try to have this transition matrix with current generation and next generation. The person who work will be working in the next generation as 0 0.8 and person who work do not work with the probability of 0 0.2. Likewise, it is for the same thing for other column of do not work. I hope you are clearly following this uh, information right now. This transition matrix is based on the observations from the given data here as well as we are just splitting up into two states work and do not work. Okay, so, the initial distribution is uh, 0.4 and 0.6. So, this is based on so, here we can see that uh, 40 percentage of women, women worked in 1960. So, that is the uh, initial state given to us. So, we are going to see if this is the case in 1960, what is going to happen afterwards. So, initial state is 40 percentage of women worked in 1960. So, which means that here it is 40 percent and 60 percent is given to us. So, that is your initial distribution. So, based on that, you are going to start our process. In one generation, we are going to multiply this to matrix and we are getting the outcome there. 
So, 50 percent women work and 50 percent do not work after one generation. But our question is we have to find for two generations. So, second generation you are going to look at. So, in this second generation again you found that like 55 percentage of women work and 45 percent do not work. So, it is a very simple prediction method so, and you might be wondering is this really reflect the true value. At times uh, for many data we observe we can find true or values that are close to true value because it is still a probability measure based on what we have. But in reality for this example in 1960s it is said that 40 percent women worked, but if you look closely maybe 1970s, 1980s things may change the policies of the government might change and there may be a different scenarios going on. So, in reality for this particular example things might be very different, but anyway we are not looking into those realities at this moment for this particular exam I mean for this particular problem here, but uh, as far as many other problems are concerned uh, we also should consider other factors that might affect. But generally speaking this is the distribution and this is the observation after one generation and after two generation. So, that is the last interpretation of these entries that we got from the output. So, if a woman worked the probability that her granddaughter will work is 0.7 and will not work is 0.3. And if that if the woman does not work the probability that her granddaughter will work is 0 0.45 will not work is 0 0.55. So, that is the whole process of this example given to us. Well with this in mind let us move on to another example uh, with more states. So, here there are three states again the next state we write it as the matrix of transition probability times the current state. So, next state is our future state just like the previous examples next state is going to be your previous state. So, in this example we have this three things A, B and C and in A, B, C you have uh, A has that is 200, B has say 120, C has 180. Okay, so, uh, this can be termed as any uh, three different states uh, probably you can consider this three as uh, say store A, store B, store C and the store A has 200 customers and store B has 120, store C has 180 and uh, for store A 80 percentage of the customers it can retain 80 percentage of customers and probably it says uh, 10 percentage of customers goes to store A from store A to store B and 20 percent of customers from store B goes to store A. And among 120 customers in store B, 70 percent is retained by store B and 10 percent move to store C. Likewise for store C, 60 percent is retained and 10 percent goes to store A as well as from store A 10 percent comes to store C. So, these are some of the transition that is happening. Initially we saw a very simple transition, but this is a little bit uh, complicated with a lot of things moving around. So, based on this uh, you can have this whole process by means of a transition matrix with uh, A, B, C. So, from this A 1, B 1, C 1 refers to the next state or the future state.
and we are going to write down this probability. So, this probability has been written based on for a 0.8 is from a to a is 0 0.8, from a to b is 0.1, from a to c is 0.1. So, the percentage that are given in this diagram was shifted into the probability matrix. So, we have this matrix and from this uh, matrix from a b c to a b c, we are taking out and uh, we know the data of a b c is given to be 200, 120 and 180 and your the total value your total value is like 500. So, based on that you are actually putting that in terms of percentage. So, in 500, 200 has 40 percent and 120 has like 24 percent and uh, 500 has like 36 percent. So, we are writing as 0 0.4, 0 0.24 and 0 0.36. So, when you multiply this two values and you will be coming up with this matrix. So, this is your next state, you are using the current state. current state probability measures and initial values for x. So, this is what happens. So, x 1 equals the probability matrix that is given to us times the x naught. So, in this case the x naught is 0 0.4, 0 0.24, 0.36 and times this one is 0.8. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, and 0 0.6. So, when you multiply this values there, you will get up the whole things. So, eventually, you will end up in, okay, we are having here. the process. So, this is the simple uh, analysis of data, how things are going on from one state to another state. We are going to still hang over with this Markov process uh, in the upcoming class as well. We will see more examples on the Markov process with other uh, ways to look at. So, what is this next state? Can we have next, next state? How much further we can go? is there a way to stabilize the whole system. We are going to look at may, many different ways on how this Markov chain property is analyzed in various domains. So, with this thought, you can also look at here. So, this is x 1, this is what we have seen right, x 1 is obtained and you got this x 1 by multiplying the p times x naught then for x 2, you are going to multiply p times x 1. So, x 1 goes here, x 2 goes here, x 3 goes here. So, it, we are going to do it several times. As you can see, until a certain part we reach, in this case x 7 and x 8, they remains the same. So, this is a kind of process in which we call it as a, it reaches a stable distribution matrix and initially we started with the a as 0.4 and this is 0.24 and this is 0.36 with 200 customers, 120 customers, 180 customers and after several states you can consider one state as one week. After several weeks, A has uh, increased its customer to 228, because people are moving in and around, like some are moving from A and some are moving to A from other states. Likewise, B has decreased, its, uh, it's increased its customer to 177 and C has decreased its customer to 101.
and they are equal, I mean their distribution is also given like 46 percentage, 35 percentage and 20 percentage. So this is how the whole process happens. We are going from one state to another state, the next state, the future state happens. So in this example, you can consider the future state as next week, next, next week, next, next week if you want, or next month, next, next month. It depends upon the domain in which you're working. Based on that, you can consider how it moves from one state to another state. It's kind of a prediction. You can see you are touching the predictions for the future things. You're actually predicting what happens in the future. That's how this whole Marco process is helping us. So that's what we saw today. Uh, we discussed about uh, the Marco chain process and several characteristics and traits of Marco property. And finally, we saw how to analyze certain data in the Marco chain. Based on your current data, you can in fact predict the future events. So this Markov chain is a very important uh, process and this is very much useful in various domains, uh, not only in statistics but also in many other areas like artificial intelligence as well. So get a firm hold on this Markov process. We are going to deal with this Markov process with many examples in upcoming lectures as well. I'm looking forward to see you there where we will discuss about the power of probability matrix, stochastic matrix and Markov chain with real world examples. Looking forward to see you there. Until then, goodbye.